deal with all these baby triceratops as they ate that food instantly. Okay, okay, so, um, here's some more leaves for you, anyone who wants food. All right, that happens. I need to do a little training before I need- Oh, I put all the meat in the thing. I don't have it. Okay. No, 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 I don't have any. I don't have any. This world is full of wonder, scientific advancements, and genetic marvels. The dinosaurs once again roam the land, thanks to the rise and fall of Jurassic World. After disaster struck, the park was left with much to study, rebuild, and recreate. Enthusiasts and poachers alike now flock to take part in what comes next. Welcome to Jurassic Origins. I have some big news regarding the future of Jurassic World. But the sponsors have come in massively today, giving us almost 2,000 likes. This means we get to open up not only this beautiful icosahedron, look at it glow, but we get to open up nine chance cubes. There's only eight of them here. We'll have to get one more chance cube, but of course, every 200 likes gives us a chance cube. Now, if you guys do manage to uh, get even close to this number of likes for the next one, I suppose I got a nice little special treat for you, being... A giant chance cube. So, of course, you know to go crazy. Everyone who's, you know, enjoying Jurassic World and its path to success. Of course, just leave a like and we'll open up that. As well as get some new dinosaurs. And the news is... I have finally got a hold of corporate about reopening Jurassic World. And I have some good news and bad news about that. I guess we'll start with the good news. That a dinosaur park will be opening in the future. However, the bad news, it is most likely not going to be this park. It is most likely not going to be Isla Nublar. Corporate thinks we need to uh, go with a more wild approach. One that's a little less, well, a little different entirely. Now, you may have heard about the uh, Site B from way back when, when they originally had dinosaurs roaming wild. And that ended up being a horrible idea at the time. Dinosaurs were just fighting each other, they tried to move dance. it was bad. But we have thought maybe that's what we need for the next park. So what they're thinking is monorail systems to see all the dinosaurs, helicopter rides, setting up gyrospheres in a very safe, secure location on the beach, and then it'll just kind of see the dinosaurs in the wild. Now I have voiced that that might not be the best situation for all the dinosaurs, considering some will clearly be eaten. But if we do begin to hatch males and females, as we've seen with the Pachycephalosaurus down here, then, uh, life should find a way. You know, Ian Malcolm stated that, uh, it'll happen no matter what. So as long as we make it possible for the dinosaurs to breed and survive, it might work out. Considering if you leave this island, they are spreading to the other islands and surviving there. So, Site B is currently the answer. But, before we get ahead of ourselves and actually get to, uh, you know, setting up dinosaurs on another site, we need to do a little bit of testing to see how the dinosaurs are going to react to each other. We're going to be able to move some of the dinosaurs off here onto that, um, location, of course, but... It's, it's going to be... It's going to be a... We're going to want the right dinosaurs in the right areas. Like, we're not going to want to put the raptors with the dryosaurs if you want the dryosaur population to survive. We will want the raptors in population with, say, the T-Rex and the larger herbivores. This way the raptors will hunt down, will pretty much scavenge a little bit and hunt down smaller other prey. While the T-Rexes, you know, just kill the larger herbivores. I don't know. But that's what we gotta test out. How these dinosaurs will act in close proximity to one another. So that means we're gonna be hatching some carnivores in the herbivore pen. However, I don't know if we're going to do that just yet. I think we need to get the large herbivores to actually grow to large herbivores first. So, we have Ankylosaur. We did hatch a Brachiosaurus by the name of Littlefoot. And we have a few other dinosaurs, including the Pachycephalosauruses, of course. But we need one of the main attractions of Jurassic World, the Triceratops. So, how many Triceratops eggs do I have? We have one here. And we have one here. Okay, so hopefully... For this test, we can actually make it a male and a female, and then we'll be able to see if they can, like, breed and survive. 
in the pseudo wild. Obviously, it's not going to be in the wild because I'm going to put them in our very large herbivore pen. But then I'm going to try to release some carnivores into there. So, I need to know from you sponsors, what carnivore do you think I should put into the herbivore pen? Since we already have the Spinosaurus and T-Rex over there, I'm thinking not going with them, but we will go with some medium-sized carnivores. We could do an Allosaurus, we could do a Ceratosaurus, um, we could throw some Sarcosuchuses around, we could finally uh, try some of these uh, water creatures nearby, and we could, uh, or we could just put more raptors out there, some of the other species of Velociraptor might be a reasonable idea. Are you guys all cool in there? Yeah. Are you guys all stuck in the door? Man, dry sources can be dumb sometimes. But you guys are great. I appreciate you. What dinosaurs do we have over here with this DNA? Uh, Carnotaur could be another one we release in there. And uh, for the most part, that seems to be the options. Ooh, or a Hererosaurus. But that's not usually a fan favorite. So let's get this uh, Triceratops DNA going through. So we'll get two different types of eggs. And that sounds like a pretty good idea to me. Oh no, we're gonna need to fill these up with water. Now, nope, there we go. I'll never have to do this, because I have lots of water in the other ones. And there we have it. Triceratops eggs. So, with these hatching, we should have a good supply of herbivores at the ready. So, we also have to name the uh, T-Rex and the Spinosaurus, which the sponsors have voted and we do have names for them. But we'll get those guys named a little bit later. Just a little something for you to look forward to. Well... Unless you really like Triceratops, then you can look forward to this, which is happening right about now. So we do have this little area that's been good for the hatchery, and honestly, the dinosaurs have been kind of migrating away from this. They really like to walk into the trees and kind of hang out there. Funny enough, the one that literally can only eat the trees doesn't hang out there too much. Littlefoot, you're looking good. Growing bigger every day. But of course, this is why we want to give them some time to grow. Just because, you know, carnivores could take down a baby Brachiosaur. You know, I could, well... Probably not take it down, but I could ride on this baby Brachiosaur. Um, I'm not going to, but because that might hurt your spine or whatnot. I imagine you guys could have some neck problems in your future if, you know, I don't know. Anyway, let's get these eggs hatching. So should we just plop all these down at once? I think that's a reasonable idea. I kind of actually want to get uh, another feeder put over here as well, though. So let's put these eggs down. They'll be hatching, then we'll go set up the feeder. That sounds like the best way to do this. Uh, so here... And here, and the other eggs hatch a little bit quicker. So we'll just put some uh, leaves around here so they have something to snack on if they do hatch without me. There we go. Take a look at the Dinopedia, and yeah, there they go. Hatching progress is enacted, and there's plenty of food in here. Actually, we should put some carnivore food in here if we're going to be uh, using this for multiple types of dinosaurs. Over here, we're going to put another feeder. Um, yes, I did grab the other feeder, fortunately. And we can, oh geez, the ankylosaurs over here are looking good. So we'll just pop this over here, throw a whole bunch of apples in there, and uh, some beef. I guess we can throw more apples in later. And then we gotta hatch these Triceratops eggs as well. So we should have four Triceratopses of uh, different genuses. So things will probably work out here, but we'll see. So I'm also gonna need to look at these guys with the dino pad, and uh, they are successfully hatching. Awesome. So those ones are, you know, climbing the percentage. I think these eggs will actually hatch first, just because of the way they're bred, you know, different types of DNA inside the strand and whatnot. I'm not a geneticist. I don't know the exact terminology of it, but these guys have a faster growth rate than these guys. Although, um, they will look different when they grow up and they'll have make different sounds, probably eat the same food, um, and probably not breed together. Or we could have a double Triceratops hybrid. It'll be like a duo Triceratops. No, that's dumb. That's just dumb. But it's fine. So, we're going to wait for these eggs to start hatching. And then... <laughs> Deal with all these baby Triceratops as they ate that food instantly. Okay, okay. So, um, here's some more leaves for you. Anyone who wants food? Alright, that happened a little quicker than I was expecting. Sorry, I don't want to put that in your face. You're good, you're good. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. You guys are... Jeez. Calm down! I got more leaves for you. Want some apples? Who wants some apples? I was not ready for this. Here you go. Here's some apples. There you go. You can wander around, little buddy. Play with your friends. It's fine. I'm just panicking. Panic is normal. So let's uh, take a look at all these guys. They're so cute! 
So, this is a uh, female Triceratops. Um, we'll read about them in a moment here. The other one here, it looks to be a, a male Triceratops. So these ones will have the potential to breed. When it comes to these ones, we have uh, this male Triceratops and this male Triceratops. Okay, so these types won't be breeding, but these types will be able to. Which uh, does make some sense. Oh, look at the little sleeping Triceratops. He looks so happy. He literally has a smile on his face. That is adorable. Look at these two night owls. Like, hey, the others are asleep. Let's go eat some leaves. <laughs> Playing hide and seek. I don't know. Where could he be? He could be hiding anywhere. I don't know. Ah, there you are. All right. So we have four baby triceratops. Oh, geez. I saw the shadows here. And for a second, I thought the uh, brachiosaur was casting a shadow. Ooh, this is glorious. Anyway, we now uh, can take a quick little look at uh, some information about the Triceratops. So, here we have the Triceratops, or the three-horned face. It's a dinosaur of particular interest, being widely represented in both entertainment and the fossil record. Its stout, powerful body reached lengths of 9 meters and heights of 3 meters. Triceratops was a force of nature to be reckoned with, emblazoned with a mighty frill and horns. These iconic ornaments grew as it reached maturity. Triceratops are commonly depicted using their headgear as weapons, but recent theories note that the presence of blood vessels in the skulls suggests that the frill was most likely used for courtship. Triceratops shared the warm North American climates of the Maastrichtian age of the Cretaceous with fearsome foes like the T-Rex. In the event of confrontation, its horns could be used to ward off or gore opponents into submission. It lived in relative harmony with other herbivores during its reign before the mass extinction at the end of the Cretaceous. It browsed low-hanging vegetation with its beak lined with rows of teeth, which sheared leaves off fibrous plants like palms, ferns, and cycads. Due to the large amount of Triceratops fossils that have been found, it is safe to say that Triceratops was one of, if not the, most common herbivores of the period. Okay, so having Triceratops everywhere would be a really realistic way to do things. Makes plenty of sense to me. Where'd, where'd the other little ones go? Where'd the other little ones go? Oh, you waking up? You need a bedtime snack? Here you go. Have some apples. There you go. Apples for everybody. Alright, now you guys ran over to here. I should get those torches out. There we go. Hello there. I need to examine you with a dino pad. And yeah, genus of Ceratopsid dinosaur that first appeared during blah, 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 blah. And so on and so forth. They reached about, yeah, we pretty much read about all of that in the uh, other notifier. But that's cool, we now have Triceratops, certainly one of the fan favorites. Definitely in uh, my top ten, and, ooh, you know who I should invite over here soon? I should invite uh, Mitch over here, he said Triceratops was his favorite. He'll probably love to see some baby Triceratops. No, no, he's a nice guy, you don't have to be scared. He's cool, and he knows about, like, science and stuff. Does that sound cool? Here, have an apple. I know you like apples, but I suppose now it's going to be time to name our Spinosaurus and T-Rex. Yeah, and we also name the T-Rex. Ooh, the lights look ominous at nighttime. Well, I suppose uh, it shouldn't be too hard. So a lot of our sponsors have been suggesting names, and uh, honestly, it's been fairly split amongst the community on what they want the name to be. But I think we've whittled it down and chosen what most people were requesting, while keeping a little bit of originality at the same time. There's some good names, and I think they will be excellent additions to the new Jurassic World Site B, or I guess at this point Site C. You know, Corporate hasn't told me if it's going to be once again on Isla Sorna. It's a good island, but dangerous. So, oh boy! Shoo, she is looking big! That is a big looking T-Rex. I mean, no offense, like big is in a powerful way, not a not a fat way. I'm not calling you fat. Uh, <laughs> all right, now we need to do a little training before I need, oh, I put all the meat in the thing. I don't have it, okay. No, 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 I don't have any, I don't have any. I don't have any, okay? But I do have this little collar for you. It's a name tag. We are going to name the Spinosaurus Finn and the T-Rex Roxy. There you go. Let me just get that name tag on. Excellent. So our T-Rex will now go by the name of Roxy. Seems like a great name for her. So, if anyone wants to throw in additional nicknames, you can call her whatever you like. 
But a Roxy, maybe even a Roxanne or Rexan. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty. It's all pretty good. Um, but yeah, we now have Roxy to be friends with Finn. Or Finnegan, as his long name. It's just usually I want to put the short names on it, because when people try to remember the dinosaurs from Jurassic World, they remember the short ones, you know, like Rexy and Blue and stuff like that. So, Finn, congratulations. Now, you are certainly taking quite a long time to grow, I might say. Um, are you up to five days old yet? Okay, you are up to five days, but still not quite in the growth cycle as the T-Rex. So I'm going to give you another uh, growth serum. This will be the last one, no, Finn. Just so you can catch up with R Roxy over there, and she never decides to eat you. Woo! There you go. Still a little bit smaller than me, but that'll help you catch up a little bit. So, there you go. That upped you to seven days old. Now, obviously, dinosaurs age at different speeds than humans, so a day for a dinosaur might be, you know, a month for us. So it's not really, uh, you know... Because they live for mil many millions of years more than us, so it's hard to say what the actual time scale is. Dinosaur clocks are a uh, archaeological relic we have never been able to find. In fact, dinosaurs, considering they don't have thumbs, probably never had clocks. Think about that. But uh, I should get some food for these guys and some food for the raptors. Who wants some snacks? Blue, you want some? Good, good. Omega? Delta, Charlie, Echo, who wants food? Yeah, yeah, you two want some food first? All right, here you go, catch, huh? Yeah, there you go. Ooh, you were hungry, Echo. Seems like not all of the raptors are uh, hungry right now. I mean, they're still chickens, so. Clearly, ooh, Blue, yeah, you want some snacks. And Omega, of course, you can never stop eating. There we go, hey, calm down, calm down. You eat the beef, not the torch. Or the chicken, you can eat the chicken as well. So there you go, you got plenty of food. Were you able to get some Delta? Here you go. Just to make sure everybody got some food. Now, is Charlie still hiding out? Just want to make sure Charlie hasn't... You know, Charlie likes to play hide-and-seek. But honestly, I'm sick of your games, Charlie. I found you after like 10 minutes last time. But if you want food, you gotta go get it. You know what, I'm gonna leave some food. Just by the watering hole here for, uh... Well, the others and, uh, Charlie, if she comes around here. Alright, you guys have a great time. I've, of course, already fed the T-Rexes. I guess if I better just... Boop, boop, there. All of the meat has been used up. Half for the Rex and the Spino, half for the, uh, Raptors. Did I say T-Rexes a second ago? I meant Rex and Spino, obviously. Or rather, Roxy and Finn. So, it looks like a lot of our dinosaurs are, uh, named now. So I guess the next name suggestions we're going to need are for the newly hatched Triceratopses. So of course, all of the sponsors of Jurassic World, feel free to let me know what you think the uh, Triceratops should be named. Uh, after that, it comes to the question, what do we want our next dinosaur to be hatched? Obviously, we spoke about... Hey, Chompy, you left your pen! You're hanging out over here? You know what? That's kind of fine. So... We uh, could just have some more comp- We know copies will pretty much work with any uh, dinosaur we throw in there with. Because they just eat bugs and stuff like that. They don't even eat dryosaurs. So copies are going to be a great choice for uh, Site B. Um, but there's also like Dilophosaurs, which we haven't hatched yet. Uh, Stegosaurs, we need to know if they're able to safely defend themselves. Parasaurs, we need to see if they can do their thing. And uh, yeah, and anything else that might be necessary. Uh, of course, we also have more Gallimimus over here, which we should probably hatch those soon as well. But we'll see what the sponsors want us to do. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but we have a couple new things built up in the loft. Now, the iguana has been on vacation, migrating south for the summer. I don't entirely know what. But we have a new enclosure right here. It's got a nice leafy nest. It's got heat lamps. It's got some bamboo to frame it in and a little ledge in case iguanas try to fall off the edge. It should be a pretty good place for Hanazi iguana to live. So, I like it. And we have also worked on our own bedroom, which probably shouldn't have taken the sign down because it still needs work, but here we have it. Huh? Huh? It's pretty nice. Now, we do still need a ceiling, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, we have this, we have, uh, I guess we're gonna have a table right here. And what's a bedroom without a bed? So let's make one of these, and let's put a bed down. 
We're probably going to want the uh, bed to be too wide. Make it a little king size bed so it's even with the uh, doorway here. And I might want to put a door on the front just in case, you know, iguanas come try to eat my toes off while I'm sleeping. I don't think iguanas do that, do they? Do any of our sponsors have pet iguanas? I don't know. Anyway, so we have that going there, and here's just some other things we'd want in here. A bed, check. A room, check. So I got those things done. Then maybe a computer, maybe um, a TV or a couch, so I can like hang out up here. Um, maybe some cabinets, tables, chairs, a desk, closet, paintings, and a rug for decoration. Anything else you think would be a uh, key for a nice bedroom, let me know, and we'll make sure to include it in the design up here. So let's go check on those baby triceratops since they have only just hatched. And let's be honest, I want to see the cute little baby triceratops again before we before we break open so many chance cubes. Actually, before we go down there, let's go grab that one spare chance cube. Because you know we ain't shortchanging the sponsor's likes out here. Let's grab that guy. And that'll be opened. In fact, what if we open a chance cube? It, it was a pretty big feat. What if we open a chance cube right in the middle of the enclosure to start things off? It's weird. It's different. I know we're breaking the cycle, but uh, I think it'll work out. So, baby Triceratops, how are you all doing? You doing good? Let's uh, make sure you got plenty of food for it. Oh, let's get the ball over there. Huh? Huh? Who wants to play ball? Do it? Yes! That is adorable. I got some apples. Yeah, you guys are probably nice and well fed. Oh, so you prefer the... Okay, oh. Have some apples. There you go. S sit. Sit. Alright, I think you're sitting, so... Good. Oh, you're growing a little faster than your your brother, so... Yeah, it's cool. You two seem to be getting along. I'm gonna have to plant more grass. Do I have any bone meal? Not currently. Hey, you calm down, okay? You calm down. Jeez, you guys really like apples. Come get the apples. Come get the apples. Okay, okay, you're not that excited. Well, he's a little excited. You wouldn't think Triceratops would be one of the quickest, most uh, excitable dinosaur children but they certainly seem to be now how excited would you guys get if i put down a chance cube huh huh oh geez uh you probably shouldn't stand on the chance cube i don't no, no. just uh careful guys you might want to back up just please okay i'm gonna stand over here and you guys are gonna leave no no like come over to here come on i'm losing daylight here no, d not more towards- Apples! I have apples! Really? Alright, fine. You are going to have the honor of being opened up in the general vicinity of the chance cube. Don't explode, don't explode, don't explode. <gasps> Thank goodness. Well, that's one chance cube down. Eight more to go. On top of that icosahedron. Let's, let's switch it up again. Let's open up this thing first. Actually, while that's opening up- Chance cube! Huh? What hap- Oh. That's- That's cool, I guess. What's this gonna turn into? Oh, an enchant table. I actually kind of needed that. So, those ones aren't always the craziest, but the giant chance cubes are the craziest, of course. So, if you do want to uh, throw on, well, you know, you know what to do. I don't need to announce it 30 times. Um, ooh, we got some uh, fish and some eggs. We got some redstone stuff, which I probably have most of it already. But good to see. Oh no! Stay away. Stay, stay back. I missed. I gotta get my shot up. I think I, come on, I had to have hit something. Stop it! Oh jeez. Yeah, that uh. Oh jeez. Shot with Bob Ross's sunshine. Yeah, no little happy little clouds for you. one just boring yeah I guess so do you want to build a snowman no it's summer I oh, man, rotten flesh I don't need this Ooh, is this a god apple look at all that EMC 